for today's lecture uh, in removal budget denture uh, we will have the sprewing and vesting of removal budget denture uh, wax pattern we have discussed in the previous uh, lectures the the process in designing partial denture uh, in uh, for cobalt chromium uh, restoration and the waxing uh, and the sheets that used and the type of the wax and how to manipulate all the removable washi denture components now to achieve a complete uh, to achieve a complete uh, restoration made of removable washi denture for cobalt chromium restoration uh, we need to go through many steps uh, we have uh, designed the wax pattern. Uh, the step now is the sprewing and vesting to prepare uh, the uh, mold to be cast into metal. Now, starting with the uh, sprewing, uh, what's the difference between sprewing and the sprue? The sprewing is the technique, the process, while the sprue is is the uh, the tool that we use to to create a bath. Uh, later on to, uh, to to use as a, uh, a channel to cast the metal now sprewing is a process of connecting the wax pattern with the corrosible former in the casting rig with a bin make of wax okay now the sprue is the hole through which the metal is poured into the mold now the sprewing is the process by the designing the sprue and to create the, the opening to mold equal sprue channel the, the object forming the sprue channel is called sprue former or sprue pin okay sprue channel or sprue pin here uh, we have the sprue former or sprue uh, bin uh, is a wax pattern used to form the channel or channels allowing molten metal to flow into the mold to make the cast so the sprue former or sprue pin here this is the uh, this term referred to that the corrosible former uh, the base on which this this base which is either ready-made plastic and we can remove it or it's uh, we can create it by using wax funnel shape wax okay the base to which the sprue former is attached while the wax pattern is being invested in a refractory investment a convex rubber plastic or metal base uh, that former can concave depression or crucible in the refractory investment uh, when is removed uh, once the investment set so it is either within the design of the deblocating tools so it's made of metal or it's made of plastic so the connection only upside down in term of whether we will discuss that the type of the sprewing whether it is direct or indirect sprewing okay the sprue should be adjust such that the terminal end of the wax pattern is only about six millimeter away from the free end of the investment that mean this is should be away from many different size uh, sides uh, with a six millimeter uh, distance the distance uh, should be uh, for example uh, maintained because the air in the mold space should escape out uh, through the pores in the investment during casting now the function of the sprue with the purpose of the sprue uh, the, the uh, first of all the sprue channel is the opening that lead uh, the sprue channel look we have the sprue sprueing is to make the sprue made of wax which is uh, create a sprue channel an opening lead to uh, f uh, leads from the crucible to the cavity in which the framework is to be cast okay now uh, also leading the molten metal from the crucible into the mold cavity and this should be large enough that means at this point should be large enough so this from the framework to the crucible on which here uh, coming the the, the, the the molten metal coming 
from this side to the channel. If we uh, imagine that the, the, the investment, uh, we will have a burnout uh, wax, which later on uh, produce a hollow mold inside the investment material. To accommodate the entering stream and uh, of the uh, proper shape to lead the metal into the mold cavity as quick as possible. Also providing a reservoir of molten metal from which those uh, actually used. For example, uh, uh, the losing of this wax pattern later on with the burnout and the, 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 the shape of the, this corrosible former shape will be as a hollow. This will give them a space, uh, a, a, in, enough reservoir, that means uh, enough space to compensate the metal as a reservoir for the me metal through the shrinkage uh, into the mold. Uh, so when the, 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 the metal solidified, uh, the solidification of the metal, uh, this will prevent the porosity caused by the shrinkage later on after uh, casting. Uh, the three basic requirements of sabru design is, first of all, the sabru must allow the molten wax to escape from the mold. That means we should use a round sabru. Do not. We shouldn't use a sharp edged sabru. So this uh, later on will give within the investment material around uh, and uh, texture uh, around a uh, channel on which the molten wax to escape from. Uh, from one direction here, and also uh, it must enable the molten metal later on into the uh, hallowed um, mold to flow into the mold with minimal uh, uh, turbulence. That means uh, the clutting of the, the, the metal should be good. The, the metal should be flow gently without any clutting the surface. Now the metal within this brew must remain molten slightly longer than the, uh, the, the alloy that uh, cast filled the mold. This will act as a reservoir to compensate for a shrinkage uh, that occurred during the uh, solidification of the casting metal. Uh, what are the general rules that we have uh, in the sabru? First of all, the sabru should be large enough so that uh, uh, should be large enough that the molten metal uh, in them will not solidify until after the metal in the casting proper has frozen. Uh, and probably we using 8 to 12 gauge round wax is usually used for multiple sabru of the removable partial denture casting. Uh, also we have sabrus should be lead to the mold cavity as direct as possible that will induce a minimal amount of uh, tuberculence uh, in the stream of the molten metal. That means the flow of the metal to round. Uh, we c for example, th this, th the green uh, color uh, plastic material, he represent the corrosible former. Uh, he, here the investment material and then the spruce. So you can imagine later on this has been removing and the cast will be easily, this is a cross section of the invested uh, uh, pattern with the refractory cast and you cannot see if, uh, not see here uh, if this will be as hollow the, the met molten metal will go through gently. Uh, this brew lead to the mold cavity as directly as possible, as I said, uh, with a lit, uh, with no tendency to uh, to solidify in, in in the way. The brew should leave the crucible from a common point and uh, be attached to the wax pattern at its bulkier section. Of course, we are looking from, uh, for example, here uh, sabru for the class part, uh, sabru here for the uh, major connector, and then later on all of these will be. Uh, directed uh, into the one hole going to the uh, main entrance later on for the metal. Uh, if the sabru channel contains sharp right uh, angle turns, great uh, turbulence uh, is uh, induced such as uh, entrapment of the gas and uh, so lead to faulty casting. So brew channels should make long ready and easier turns. That means round, bubbled, uh, 
no sharp angles and should enter the mold cavity from a direction designed to prevent splash at this point that means the flow it's look like the flow of the, uh, the 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 metal go through a main hole into the uh, less uh, uh, or ma uh, minor holes to, to to fill all the cavity with uh, for the mold um, uh, with the design uh, that we created uh, uh, with with the fine uh, details. Now, sprue design will vary depend on the type of the restoration being cast. That means if it is a, 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 a removable architecture for maxillary arch or mandibular arch, uh, whether we are using full palatal strap or uh, full palatal blade, uh, anterior uh, posterior palatal strap, bar, uh, lingual bar, sublingual, all of the depends on the, the, the size of the subaru depends on that because uh, I cannot use uh, a, a lar uh, small subarus for for uh, palatal uh, plate which we need a major subaru with the di a huge diameter and then a minor subaru with a huge uh, diameter to to make easily flow the metal uh, into the all the details without solidification the way the alloy that we use because the density of the alloy different from the cobalt to chromium to the nickel chromium if we are using gold uh, alloy uh, so the density of this metal is different so the, the pressure and and the the the, uh, the pressure the flow uh, the melting point as well the density in flowing this will be different uh, in, uh, so we are uh, in, in respect to the to the uh, alloy that used for this restoration uh, to the uh, design of the uh, Supro as well. And the casting machine, whether we are using manual casting machine or induction casting machine or uh, centrifugal casting machine, because this depends also on the pressure allowed to fill all the uh, mold within limited time. Now we are going to the attachment of the sprue. The sprue should be attached to the bulky point of the mold pattern. And mostly we are using the shoulders here. The two bulky points exist with, the thin, uh, with a thin section uh, between them, uh, each of the bulky spots should be sprued. Uh, do not use the smooth uh, or uh, fine, uh, we do not sprue direct to the major connector because the major connector thickness probably 0.8 and the flung of the material uh, or the metal through it will be solidified before filling the uh, mold um, with the metal. So we generally use the shoulders but sometimes the shoulders and the external finish line within the design uh, sometimes we we do need some modification or additional sprues in terms of connecting to the occlusal rests uh, and this is essential in terms of having for example uh, or uh, from the occlusal rest the slope going to the minor uh, connector uh, at right angle this point is the bulkiest point and it is easy to be cut the sprue later on and finish it without affecting the 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 uh, the dimension of the restoration uh, the points uh, of attachment should be flared out and local uh, construction avoided uh, if this practice is followed, the sprue, which is bulky enough to freeze after the case of framework has frozen, will continue to feed molten metal to the framework until it has entirely solidified to provide a sound metal in the casting proper without shrinkage porosity. Uh, uh, generally, uh, we have two uh, types of uh, uh, or two basic types of sprue classified based on the number of sprues that the multiple sprue and the single sprue the multiple sprue that means the sprue is connecting uh, connected between the framework and the main sprue uh, which is the single sprue and the single sprue which is uh, uh, unite all the, uh, the the multiple sprues into the crucible uh, 
uh, former. So uh, multiple subru most removable partial denture casting require multiple subru with the use of eight to twelve gauge, of course, round wax uh, subru. Uh, for main subru, we are using twelve to eighteen gauge round uh, wax shape uh, for uh, for auxiliary sprues as well. Uh, some important points to remember. Uh, uh, in multiple sprewing, uh, which is first of all, use a few sprue of large diameter rather than several smaller sprues uh, because this may be effect on the uh, position of the restoration within the investment. So, having a few sprues with a large is better and giving a strong uh, way or channel. To, to flow the material. Keep all sprues as short and direct as possible. Do not use a long sprue. This will give a long way for the metal to go through and maybe the, 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 the metal will, um, will start to solidify in the way and this will lead to incomplete casting. Uh, avoid uh, abrupt change in direction. Avoid T-shaped junction uh, as much as possible. That means use round look here use round connection look to the connection of the minor to the shoulder of the framework here and there and then the connection between the uh, multiple uh, sprues the minor to the main sprue which is round this giving a, a gentle flow for the metal from here to there and then to the uh, uh, other parts and the, and the component of the uh, design. Uh, uh, reinforce all uh, junction with additional wax to prevent construction in the sharp uh, channel and to prevent V-shaped section of investment that might break away and be carried into the casting. So these rounded angles essential to avoid uh, first of all any investment to go and trapped inside it and this will lead to as a, uh, obst obstacles to the f uh, flowing of the metal. You can imagine the flow of the metal into round circle rather than going into sharp angles. This will, will uh, reduce the, 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 the continuity and the flow of the metal at this point, which lead to solidify the metal at this point without going farther flowing to the other uh, parts of the uh, design. Uh, in terms of single uh, subru is preferred for mandibular framework, of course. Uh, why? Uh, be, the use of single subru is limited to those maxillary framework uh, in which because of the presence of the palatal plate, uh, it is possible to locate multiple sprues uh, centrally. The single uh, subru is generally going with the, uh, and we will discuss that later on, the type of the sprues. Okay, now uh, it is impossible to locate multiple subru centrally. A single subru must be attached to wax pattern, so the direction of the flow of the molten metal will be barreled to the long axis of the single uh, subru. Now, the advantages of the using of the single uh, subru um, uh, is limited to those maxillary framework uh, in which, uh, because of the presence of the bilateral blade, it is impossible to locate multiple sprues centrally. Okay, now uh, disadvantage of using a single uh, sprue is the large casting is that uh, an extra long investment ring must be used with the uh, single uh, sprue. Uh, now we have the sprueing method. We have two types of the sprueing method, direct and indirect. Generally, the direct used for the maxillary, but sometimes used with the mandibular. Uh, in, in, uh, direct method used in upper and lower cast in which we have a reservoir and sprue originated from into the thickest portion, uh, thickest portion of the uh, design here, the thickest portion, and this is the direct sprue. Okay, and if we have, for example, for palatal, we need to use this. The design include the palate, so we cannot use the indirect one. Uh, this is for the direct, while the indirect one uh, used in the lower cast commonly because we need to make a hole uh, in the base, make a hole in the base of the cast and this, when we duplicate the cast, 
uh, into a refractory cast we can create this hole or we can later on uh, drill it uh, to make sure uh, it's open but to have a clean refractory cast it is possible within uh, creating the refractory cast uh, after duplicating the cast using agar agar we can use the uh, crucible former uh, special uh, or duplicating the flask special the crucible former to create the hole here in the cast the reservoir will be allow the cast the main sprue enters through the hole and from it multiple sprue originated it cannot be used in upper cast in case of bilateral plate major connector uh, of course uh, i should mention also the using of vents the vents is a small auxiliary sprue is used uh, or vents should be placed in order to improve the casting uh, as they form pathway for the gases to escape through the casting process says there is a, a gas will escape if we do not use a, a small vents which is the, sometimes we using uh, uh, these vents uh, uh, the same uh, cross section as the class for example but uh, 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 in, in terms of connecting uh, this in different points within the casting and especially uh, with with those uh, have delicate uh, design like the the uh, uh, to avoid the uh, gas entrapped into the end of the uh, tip of the clasp with the retentive part so we are using these vents to escape the gases through it other than uh, and these are fines because the gas going into the deepest part so this will escape to the uh, and and act sometimes as a reservoir for it uh, the spring procedure in the medullar cast, for example, the hole is placed in the center of the lingual uh, space of the cast, okay? Whereas in the maxillary cast, the sprue hole is placed in the palatal surface of the cast, away from the wax pattern. That means in case of anterior posterior palatal strap or bar or U shape uh, major connector, okay, dear students? We should put this in our mind. The sprue hole is placed in the bilateral surface of the cast away from the wax pattern. If a complete pellet major connector is planned for the maxilla, then the sprue should be placed to extend from the posterior aspect of the cast. Uh, the, the lateral or posterior uh, entry uh, sprues are used for complete bilateral major connector sometimes like this. So uh, sometimes we're using this with the upper uh, and this with the uh, lower. Uh, after making the uh, sprue hole, uh, a thick roll of wax is uh, pushed through the hole till it extends about 10 millimeter uh, above the tissue surface of the cast, like in this image, okay? Uh, after positioning the wax, it is sealed to the surface of the sprue holes. So, after the design finished, we can put this here. After the design finished, we can put this. Or we can actually create this to fill the, the, the hole with the sprue uh, wax. And then we can design. It depends on the skills of the technician. Can easily be work with the design first and then with the sprue or just filling this and then going to the uh, uh, sprue. Now, sprue leads are positioned to extend directly from the wax rod to the wax pattern. <coughs> so we're using the, the here the minor connectors, uh, sorry, minor sprues to connect between the main sprue and then to the generally to the to the design either a single sprue can be placed or multiple auxiliary multiple auxiliary sprues can be placed here uh, horizontal sprue for example uh, can be uh, horizontal sprue uh, leads are placed to connect the pattern with the main sprue here this is the horizontal uh, sprue now the sprue form uh, is made uh, uh, such a, um, uh, that the cast is approximately six millimeter 
uh, near the casting end of the investing ring and this is essential to position this which is uh, later on after positioning this for example the investment um, the will be the investment material will fall. Uh, look here the crucible, the indirect technique going through the cast, uh, sprue the main sprue, the auxiliary sprues, and the distance should be six millimeter here and six millimeter at least. Okay, and the investment material will fill all the part of the after positioning the cast sprue and sprue former in the casting ring the setup is ready for investing and that's what we are uh, going to discuss now the investing of uh, now the framework and the sprueing finished and we are going to invest the wax pattern using this investment uh, material uh, the investing is the process and the investing material is the material used to invest the costs here we already have the 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 refractory cast this is a cross section as i mentioned previously this is the cast and the hello here showing the the the, the wax pattern here should be there and then this is the refractory material on which uh, uh, rounded the design and the hull to, to make sure that this space is ready to uh, to fill the wa uh, to fill with the melting wax the investing surrounds the wax pattern and the sprue with a stone like material that can that mean gypsum product uh, that can stand uh, that w can withstand the the high temperature and forces ex uh, experience during the burnout and the casting procedure that means the material should have strong uh, 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 strong resistant to uh, to fracture and the strength material and the investment material is a mixture of silicon binder used to invest wax pattern during the casting procedure so what the purpose of the investing what the purpose from the investing first of all it provides the strength necessary to hold the force exerted by the uh, entering uh, stream of molten metal until this metal uh, uh, has solidified into the form of pattern okay it provides also a smooth surface for the mold cavity so that the final casting will require a little finish as possible in some situation, uh, a deo oxidizing agent is used to keep surface bright. Uh, that means uh, surface tension, okay, uh, liquid. Uh, it provides an uh, avenue of escape uh, for most of the gases entrapped in the mold cavity by the entering steam of the molten metal because this material has porosity. So. Uh, so many gases go through it but this will not affect the dimensional accuracy of the design uh, it will provide necessarily compensating for the dimensional change of the alloy uh, from the molten to solid uh, to cold state so can withstand uh, withstand the, the forces from the pushing of the metal uh, the uh, into molten with the pressure and then the solidification and the thermal expansion thermal ex uh, construction uh, and the, the expansion and the shrinkage going through the material what the requirement of an investment material we have different investment material like uh, plaster uh, stone type one type two type three but the investment material for thermal purposes like uh, gypsum bro such a gypsum product should provide uh, and uh, should have uh, uh, many important properties the investment mold must expand to compensate for the alloy shrinkage which occur during the cooling of molten metal and of course the investment material using uh, generally the for example phosphate bonded investment material can be used for, with all type of the metals but there are many metals uh, the, the the investment ma um, investment material suitable to them to compensate the shrinkage and the the contraction and the uh, uh, and the shrinkage related to th uh, melting into uh, uh, melt, uh, from melting to solidification uh, uh, inside the mold. Yeah. Uh, now, the powder 
uh, should have a fine particle size to give a smooth surface to the casting. Of course, while looking for a smooth surface, we need our design with the less uh, rough surface. So it's only we need to polish it later on. Because, we are, for example, if we are using uh, not a, a handmade wax waxing, but still our finishing lines within the framework are smooth. So the, the investment material should uh, uh, replicate that. Then manipulation should be easy. It should have a suitable setting time. That means the mixing time, the setting time, uh, the initial setting time, the the setting time in the furnace. The the uh, the material should have a smooth uh, consistency when mixed. That means not lobulated with the glitter. Uh, some uh, clotting uh, within the material it should be homogeneous mixing. Uh, also, uh, the set material should be porous enough to permit air in the mold cavity to escape easily during casting. That means not really uh, large pores, but the material should have a porous uh, texture within the material behavior itself because the, the escaping of the gas through these pores give us a smooth casting later on. At higher temperature, the investment must not decompose to give off gases that may uh, corrode the surface of the alloy. That means lead to more oxidation and affect the properties of the metal that we use. So it, it should be uh, the properties are stable uh, during a high temperature because within the casting we may reach 1100 centigrade uh, uh, to melt many materials like denture based uh, like uh, cobalt to chromium denture based material the high the melting point and with the nickel chromium probably and with the gold in term of 850 or 900 centigrade uh, it also uh, must have adequate strength at uh, room temperature to permit handling and enough strength at high temperature to withstand the impact uh, force of molten uh, metal. Okay, casting temperature should not be critical. That means there is a range for it. It's not only point because we have uh, we have to mold the material. Uh, then uh, forcing the material uh, molten metal uh, inside the mold and giving enough time for all this process which may be five to six minutes so the the temperature casting temperature uh, for it is not uh, should not be critical after casting it should break away easily from the surface of the metal that means do not attach perfectly to the metal giving a uh, proper for example if we using uh, a digital hammer or we using uh, an, uh, a normal uh, hand hammer it's easily to remove from the uh, cast metal and should not react chemically with it that means do not affect the chemi uh, and chemical reaction with the metal that we are using it should be also economic that means the material available and not um, uh, too much costly uh, and this is depend on the patient uh, actually whether they want their restoration made of gold alloy or nickel chromium or cobalt chromium uh, the, the type of the investment material we have, gypsum bonded investment material, uh, they are used for casting gold alloy. They can withstand temperature up to 700 centigrade, of course. Phosphate bonded investment material, the most uh, commonly used uh, for metal ceramic and cobalt chromium alloy, they can withstand higher temperature and as I mentioned, it's above 800 and it's, it's up to one. Uh, 1300 centigrade uh, and we have ethyl silica bonded investment they are an alternative to phosphate bonded investment material for high temperature casting uh, uh, base metal uh, alloy uh, partial uh, denture uh, we have discussed through this lecture the the sprawling technique and the investment and the investing procedure so for uh, i would like you to prepare the quiz for next week to enumerate the type of uh, investment material and uh, uh, each type is suitable for which uh, ca uh, denture based uh, casting uh, uh, metal thank you for today uh, uh, take care and uh, I'm looking forward to discuss the next topic uh, in our lecture in, in room of Basha denture thank you